Hello everyone, I am back from the dead and I brought an old man with me and we're going to sit by the fire and we're going to talk about shenanigans and things <coughs> and stuff I've watched on TV and uh, we're going to talk about the fact that there's uh, what like a foot of snow in Colorado right now, right about the time before Rocky Mountain Open. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. And I was like, all the people who are driving out there, I wish you luck. <laughs> Hopefully you make it. So I hope that it goes off without a hitch. I saw that uh, <laughs> I saw the Jersey Mike made it uh, with all the, yeah. the terrain. So I was happy to see that. made it yesterday. Yeah. I mean, I have to give a quick shout out to Mike. That dude is a road warrior, like a madman. Also, he just gets thrown that trailer and they just go, hey, Mike, want to drive a couple thousand miles deuces guy figure it out <laughs> he just does it each each time man <laughs> so well done well done um, hey, that, the amount of driving that man has done is insane oh it's just crazy time yeah it's colorado in march shit happens uh, kr 100 percent it does uh i kind of wish i was out there to be honest with you i mean i it, literally i could not have uh, I would have been banished from any airport with if I would have showed up the way I am right now. <laughs> that would be so like you went no, yeah, just like no. I would have got the spray bottle like the can on the on the couch. Get out of there! No, go on, get. I <laughs> uh, need to start calling him Saint Bradestine because this guy has come back from the dead so many times. True story. <laughs> One of the best things is last week. Um, I tried to do multiple coachings and a couple people because a couple people were going to big tournaments and I wanted to talk with them before they went. And all of them literally went, Hey man, um, I just don't feel like talking to a dead person. <laughs> this isn't working for me. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, mean, so I, I got something great to say this week at the art store. Um, we have our open game nights on Tuesday nights this week. Old World and 40K for the first time ever were even in the number of tables going. Dude, I still want to play. I haven't got a chance to play Old World because I just haven't been to stores and stuff like that. So whoever's playing it that lives near me, I want to play some more fantasy. That was one of my favorite big... <coughs> that was my favorite weekend game to play. I'm, I've got damn probability. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to streaming, Brad. Go blue. <laughs> Color fucker. But uh, I used to love going to the store because uh, the, the game Toledo game room used to be a big deal on uh, Fridays. He used to show up on a Friday night and we would literally slam down like 20, 30,000 point games like at the drop of a hat because the square bases, you know what I mean? The the movement trays are just so easy to put big ass shit. You put dragons down and units are chosen of corn, you know what I mean? Uh, I, I just used to love that kind of stuff. It wasn't my favorite game competitively, but it was my one of my favorite games to just go, hey, Brian, you know that big ass model you've been working on? Let's just fucking, let's throw it on the table with a bunch of other bullshit and grab two or three other people, you know what I mean? Uh, I love shit like that. <laughs> It's it's a fun game. Uh, this edition of Old World, they took a lot of the stuff from the from many editions, and then went all right. Here's some stuff from a couple other game systems as well, and threw it in and went all right. Let's see if this works. And it's really fun. It's really good. It, they made the quick play guide that comes in the Tomb Kings and Bretonian box is like a godsend little thing for when you're learning it because it you know. Did this happen? All right, X moved to this. X moved to this. It's really well put together. It's going to get like it to any, you. <laughs> like, any, <laughs> like any GW game, there's a few things that need ironing out, but for the most part, they did a really solid job. So, see, I've always been, I, I played competitively in it for a bit, but I've, like I said, I, I mostly I, I played uh, just, you know, a lot of pickup games and stuff like that. So, 
I've always had it. It's had a, a nice place in my heart because of that, though. Because anytime that there was shit rules or some of the things were shit, uh, it didn't really matter to me because we would just bend it. You know what I mean? I'm actually thinking about that. I'm thinking about, speaking of that kind of stuff, I think I'm going to go to some narrative events this year. I haven't been to one, but I, it always really has been intriguing me uh, to plan some of that stuff because I've heard some really good stuff about them. I think that's uh, if I go to LVO next year, I want to play in the narrative event. I, I although Champs is fun, I had a you know, really good time playing in it. Really want to play in the narrative because they spend weeks ahead of time planning it out and what you're doing. And I just want to show up with a billion bugs and go, all right. And you can change your lists and they can do different forms of the invasion. I want to do that because it sounds like a good time. I'm actually thinking about it, the boys this year, because we do the teams event on Friday. I'm really thinking about on Friday as well, doing a, hey, show up with X number of points of everything. Brian's bringing his Tyranids. We're throwing a whole bunch of boards together and we're just going to be running across the table. Like an apocalypse type thing? Yeah, like a giant apocalypse thing. I'm done with that, too. Adepticon's got a good one for that. That big ass apocalypse game they play is fucking crazy. Well, what uh, about the... I, you got to remember, I used to run the big-ass one there with the 13th Legion. Oh, yeah, I forgot that. We did, we did all that stuff. I mean, we, we haven't done it the last few years, but uh, it, it it was an absolute blast. I do love the fact that I just told you, hey, I remember this one thing that I liked. I wonder who <laughs> ran it. And you were like, yeah, it was me, asshole. It was <laughs> myself, Steve Biggs, a couple other guys from the 13th Legion, uh, Steve Schlegel, all did that together, and it was a fantastically good time. We also ran the uh, the the battle for Hell's Reach a couple of years. That was good fun. Lots of good stuff. Bro, I, 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 I'm Go sad ahead. that I'm missing Adepticon this year, but I'm looking forward to going to All Is Dust. I'm super excited for Adepticon this year. Uh, ever since I stopped playing in the Champs and had more time to just do other stuff, because I'm going to this is my 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 uh, plan for this this next weekend. Uh, BGG John and I are uh, he's driving me down. I'm shooting over to Allen's and I'm going to be the gopher, you know, for do, being not useful in the last parts of putting together the display board and everything else. And then <clears throat> I'm going to screw around, hang out with everybody. Uh, and then Friday I'm playing in the long war doubles with Matt Aaron and he's just got, you know, everything hooked up. For... Did, he, did he get to, is he still working on is, Are you guys playing the Necrons? We're playing the Necrons, dude. They're coming out great. <sighs> Dude, his Wraith conversions that he's been doing are awesome. Yeah. I, when Man. he unveils that, you got, everyone's going to be blown away. I, I'd be shocked. Did you see the Tomb Raiders good. or Tomb Blades? Yeah. Dude, I told him he was so annoyed at me because I, I didn't even say he had to do it or anything. And he just he was like, I have to do it now. Because he had them originally where they didn't really have riders. And I go, you know what would be cooler is instead of the regular riders, you had riders with cloaks flowing behind him. And you could just see his face go, Aah. and I'm like. And then and then he started using those night haunt models. Yes. Oh, right. <clears throat> and trust me, if when you see it, when it makes showcase at something, because it's 100% going to make pictures from Adepticon, absolutely fantastic stuff. Uh, real quick for everybody, Evan, we we cannot talk about the, the any, we can't talk about any leaks. We can trouble and kr I'm, I'm excited to see kenny wyatt for sure oh jesus lie loud things with the two super chat what the fuck man you're supposed to be dead uh, also go blue <laughs> this is all... the, the funny part of this go blue thing is it has caught on on the on the stream i got an email from one of the guys who watches uh the stream at work and he was like hey found out about the store through the stream great you guys selections fantastic uh you know and also go blue <laughs> so, <laughs> if you guys haven't seen it it's on the page right now <laughs> just put up that that compilation of me saying go blue and as much as i hated it i loved it at the same time oh, it was fan fucking tastic i just me go blue go blue. the best is when he plays the fight song in the background yeah. <laughs> oh man it's uh, so well done. but uh so so, so, Brad, your team for Adepticon, <coughs> as you're doing all well, the Necrons, right? We'll pa we'll pause it real quick, because I do want to go back to the Man Aaron stuff, because I put up, so far, three parts of the series of him um, showing his models. And Tuesday, 
Actually, I have it up on. I'll have it up basically when everybody's going to Adepticon. Uh, the last part of the series of him getting the Necrons ready, and he's been doing such crazily fast good work. And I was giving him shit about it because you know he's such a perfectionist. And he was working his shit for forever. <laughs> hey Brian, that was me. Go blue. God damn it. But uh, he's such a perfectionist. He's gotten all this shit ready in six weeks, man. And I, I think I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I really think that he's gonna explode out with different armies now. You know what I mean? I think that Matt realized he can get some stuff done. And he doesn't have to obsess over the last little thing. He will still, of course. You know what I mean? But man, the the work he's got done in that six weeks is bonkers, Tom. Between conversions and clean painted, and the, you'll wait till you see our display board. Uh, it looks really nice. It's got yeah, dark with the contrasts on it. Uh, it 100 KR because Matt's great at explaining stuff. All hobbyists should probably watch it. Really informative for any level. He goes breaks it down. The very last one we put up, he put up the color chart and talked about why he chose things. God damn it, Lyle Dixon with two dollars super chat. Go blue, go Chiefs, and fuck. Oh man, that's not right. F the Raiders. That's hurtful. <laughs> Aww. I'm just sad. But he puts up the color chart. And looks at, and I what I really liked is he was explaining in, in a way that like even my little tiny no hobby brain got, could get it. You know what I mean? Where he's like, I pick these colors and I want to work with this, and this creates contrast, and this will make your your units pop. Um, and I, I just like the way he did it. It was just really nice. You know what I mean? He's just explaining to everybody, you know. And I, I hope it's really helpful because we wanted to put it out in a way to to show people you can get more stuff ready you can don't be daunted by hobby projects you know what i mean and i've been pretty excited i'm going uh i'm paying again on sunday by the way uh obviously i i had a a blip in my in my hobby project when i decided i was going to just die and not go anywhere so uh i mean so one of the nice things is this this weekend I'm going to an event with someone that has been to my events and I've never gone to an event with him. Uh, the tattoo guy from Salt City that you met who played the Death Guard that were absolutely gorgeous. Oh, his army him. was so good looking. <laughs> so <laughs> oh, KR, Dollar Nice Super Chat. Go Buckeyes. Yes. I'm sick of Go Blue. You know what? <laughs> I know we were friends for a reason. <laughs> so uh and jim's amazing death guard so i'm driving up to uh all is dust gt which is happening in petawawa ontario canada uh put on by some of the fantastic guys up there um they have some monster and, hobbyists up there by the way oh god absolutely and I, i'm gonna go up there and i'm gonna bring my tyranids and i'm gonna be really happy that i'm playing them i'll probably do terrible uh, we'll talk about my lists in a minute <laughs> um but it's, it's a fun time. If you ever get a chance, I know they're the weekend opposite Adepticon, but if you're in the upper Northeast and you don't want to go all the way to Adepticon, hop on over there. It's not, a, it's an easy drive from pretty much everywhere in the Northeast. It's a really nice place. Well, those guys put on some really nice tournaments too. Uh, the, God yeah, damn, what is it? Who's all runs it? Why am I blanking right now? I feel like an idiot about it. Him uh, and his GSC. Um, fuck me. Yeah. I'm old. It's my fact. I'm drawing a blank too. I know the guys that run it. Um, but uh, they they yeah. they put out pretty solid terrain. They ran it really well. There's so many guys with so many good old armies up there. I well, mean, and the, the nice part is is they're doing like with being where I am. We run a lot of GW terrain. It's what people like. It's very popular. I'm going up there and I'm going to be playing in WTC style uh, terrain and scoring, which I haven't done in almost a year. I really do enjoy it. It's going to be a fun, different, different challenge for me to play. Uh, they have all the WTC style terrain from Whale and Utani, um, which make fantastic pre-printed stuff. Uh, it's that fold flat stuff I use at Salt City and that they use at WTC. <clears throat> um, really looking forward to it. it they, they do a great job. It's a fun time. And if you go to an event in Canada, it almost always includes your food, at least for your lunch on both days, which is fantastic. Like I said, I really enjoyed it. I'm gonna, I'm, I think I'm gonna go back this year. I'm gonna see if I can, I can steal up on my boy Rich Hughes' house, uh, sneak in, be like, hey man, I haven't been there in a minute, but uh, I will definitely take off my shoes. You've heard that story. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, 
So, all right, you were you're asking about the weekend stuff. I wanted to I wanted to give Matt Aaron his due because I really enjoyed what he's 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 done so far. But now uh, they talked to me about the weekend. You wanted to talk about the team, uh, which is one of my favorite tournaments of the entire year, by the way. Adepticon team tournament, love it. Been playing it for, Jesus, has it been twenty years? Feels like it. Fifteen? No, it's been nineteen. I think nineteen. Yeah. So you got to take that COVID year out. That's so, true. Yeah. Well, we had two years for COVID for Adepticon. Yeah, we did have two years for COVID. So we'll just say 20 years just blanketing it. Yeah. So, but we're I'm excited for this week. We're playing Necrons all weekend long. So I'm playing it with Matt. Matt's bringing Necrons to Nopti Court. And then we've got um, playing it for the weekend. Uh-oh, Kenneth Smith, $4.9 Super Chat. Go Corbulu! Proxy Corbulu is Gabriel Seth this weekend, you know, because Corbulu is less good. That is true. <laughs> I have to. I have to. <laughs> and there we go. We killed. We killed. Oh, that, was, that, was, that, was, that was good. No, that was fucking good, man. Oh, it killed me with laughter. Um, I'm like the uh, what was it? it what uh, who framed Roger Rabbit? I'm, I'm, I'm the the weasels killing myself. Uh, so yeah, man, it was a time warp. Uh. Fuck. Can opt to court all weekend. I'm very excited. Props because he paints my part of the of the uh the army. And we're doing Necrons, but but our whole theme is uh the war in heaven. And we've got so many custom models because we have the Necrons and the Necron tier, and then we've also got the old ones models uh that we've got. So I'm pretty excited for this year. We're doing the whole tree of uh, tree of life <laughs> to symbolize, you know, the warp and the physical realm and everything else. Uh, it's we're we're going pretty hardcore on it. So we'll see how it actually fully becomes reality. But the idea was is pretty big. You know what I mean? So this is going to be a big year, hopefully for us. Uh, it's the first time I think we're taking the most comp army we've ever taken. <clears throat> but it was just because I wanted it to be, you know, uh, you know, the Necrons. It just makes sense for the Necrons for the War in Heaven. So we okay. literally, when we chose it before, uh, Necrons were any good. You know what I mean? This was last year when we started on yep. this. Well, I was like, I, I, I liked uh, Pajama Pants' idea of doing Helldivers for a team. He put that up after. He was like, oh, man, if we haven't spent so much time doing this Necron thing, I'd so be throwing together all Helldivers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, he's so excited about that. Jesus. No one gets more excited about a random game than Alan. Oh, Alan loves random games. He's just like, I'm doing, he gave me an entire breakdown of every way that he's going to make a Helldiver army. And I'm like, do you just sit up and put these things together? He's like, yes. <laughs> I'm like, all right. <laughs> Uh, it is what it is. No, but I'm I'm pumped for uh, hanging out. Also, if you're at Adepticon, you're at the hotel. Late in the evening, go to the lobby, hang out where the fireplace and stuff is. There's so much board games and card games and just people hanging out. Half the Absolutely. time, there's somebody with a guitar just doing shit. Uh, Mike Brandt might be somewhere singing in the distance. Yeah, exactly, in the distance. <laughs> Siren calls of Mike Brandt. But, like, that's the most fun part of the tournament, man. You know what I mean? It's just fucking off playing random board game in the middle of the night, you know, while having a couple of drinks. Uh, that's what Depticon's cool for me for that. I, I love it with that. So it's it's been Depticon legitimate. Depticon is, always is and will always be one of my favorite conventions. Number one, it's one of the old school conventions um, that – started putting the hobby first a long time ago and still kind of does in a lot of ways. Um, clearly by their one day champs kind of thing, uh, which is really fantastic still to this day. Um, and the team's event, the fact that they give such provenance to the showcase where they go through and put all those teams out there that put in phenomenal hobby and theme and, Every effort into it. Armies on display is awesome. Yeah. The armies on parade that they do or d d display or whatever they call it. Whatever. I, I might be wrong on either I one. I think it's armies on parade. The the hallway lined with those armies with things lit up 
and motion and sound effects and everything else. Walking through there and seeing everybody's army and the pride that everyone has on their face with that out there is fantastic. That's like the year that Alan built the golden throne for when you guys played custodes. That's right, baby. Dude, um, the, uh, dude my favorite, so well, one of my favorites is the guy that did uh, AOS last year that had that entire, Castle? yes, he had a dragon mountain. It, it was gargantuan. It was it, like six plus feet tall. It, dude, I, I literally it thought it was some insane. shit. I thought it was some shit that GW brought. Like, no, man, that's his display. I'm like, what? That's how, that's beyond insane. And uh, considering, number one, AOS models are prettier than 40K models. We can just put that out there. It's true 100% story. true. And <clears throat> the fact that they, <clears throat> over the last several years, have picked up their hobby game to where they want to kind of put us to shame with the 40K side of things, that... I can't wait to see what comes out of that this year without being there. I'm going to be relying on pictures a lot, but let me tell you, if you have the best painters painting AOS models, it's going to be amazing. I'm excited it, to see some of this stuff because I really like the big models. Like that's my jam is, yeah. is big. Models. As much as I'm the trash man, as far as what I want in my army in 40 K, the things that get me psyched about the hobby are big, display pieces uh so like that we we had a, a nice painting contest for uh spot the, at the art store that was sponsored by iwata on uh, their new world's paint line check out new world's paints they're absolutely fantastic through an airbrush they're really phenomenal for uh, miniatures that's what they were designed for um and one of the guys who helps run du bois um who was a key component of the aos side of things joshua keel entered this scar brand that was bright poppy really vibrant reds instead of doing like blacks between the wings he did really deep purples and really cool shading and like it won overall the painting competition by a mile landslide and we had tons of different categories and this got the most votes over all the categories and it was just phenomenal and seeing that nice display piece and that really cool thing painted differently really well done was exciting and so many people got pumped that people are like, when's your next paint contest? I got to get something in there. I got to have something that looks better. Than that. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Yeah. Uh, who did the, the last, uh, it was last Du Bois. Who did the AOS pirate, the, the giant boat? Oh. That was boss mode too. That one I don't remember. Oh, see the year before Martin Orlando did the, uh, I'd enough. Or not died enough. The high elves, whatever that. Oh, oh man. Yeah. the <laughs> names have been changed to protect the innocent. Yeah, I, <laughs> but so, uh oh, how many paint lines are there now? I can't keep up. Yeah, I've never kept up. I just Dude, there are so many paint lines. There are so many good paint lines now. Um, Army painter fanatic that's coming out shortly. Actually, the the sets drop tomorrow. Um, I got to test a few of the paints. Absolutely phenomenal. Heavy pigment. Beautiful coverage. Fantastic paints. Huge step up from Army Painter. Um, they took leaps and bounds. Monument Hobbies, absolutely fantastic. Uh, AK Interactive has their new Wave 3 of their paints that are phenomenal. Vallejo just redid a lot of their colors and are now doing color laser match matching, which is a big thing. Um, where they'll have much better consistency across their paint lines. Pardon me. Lasers. Um, and yes, the lasers. Um, there's a lot of companies that have been stepping it up and doing some phenomenal stuff. I mean, Monument really did help. Uh, like, before Monument, there was Scale 75. They brought artist-grade paints into our hobby. Um, but, like, it, there's so many good paint lines. And if you look at, like, things like Golden, who is in artist grade paint, but they make paints that are, you know, high flow paints, fluid paints that are designed and work well with miniatures. Uh, scale 75 does phenomenal stuff. They're a little different of a style of acrylic. They have a gel base in them as compared to just water. There are so many paint lines out there that if you want a color, it's available. You don't have to mix it. If you don't want to mix it and do color theory and everything else, absolutely phenomenal. Um, 
Pro Acryl with Monument Hobbies has just been absolutely fantastic. Um, I've been trying to get the store to carry it because we have a lot of paint lines in the store and it's hard to bring in another one. But I have a feeling they'll be on my sales floor before too long because they're just really good paints. And the thing I always get asked by many, many people is what white paints the best because Games Workshops is not good. Uh, and I tell everybody the same thing. Golden, titanium, white, artist grade paints thin it down with water you will be extremely happy and never have a problem wait for all these long names for it death ninja kung fu slayer of dragons white gold eyeball paint <laughs> well wait wait until you start talking about like interference paints and color shift paints and all these other things that interference what does that even mean so interference paint actually allows, it's like a color shift paint, except it has an interference with the light. If you put it over white, it does a different shade of interference of the colors when light hits it versus when you put it over black. Like flip-flop um, paint? Huh? Like flip-flop paint? It kind of. It does flip-flop, but when you turn it in the light, it does different things. And when you put it over white, it gives you a different hue of shine versus when you put it over black. And you can do so many different things with it. So I'm uh, all I know is contrast paints are now my 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 new favorite thing. And there's and there's good lines of that. You have contrast. You have speed paint 2.0. Uh, you have scale 75 that in, has Insta color. I'm I know Vallejo has their own version of speed paints and contrast. It, it's it's a great time to be a painter. Um, it's a great time to be a hobbyist. When I started doing this as as a hobbyist. The only way to learn was, you know, the random old guy in the back of the store who, if he was nice, would share some of his techniques with you. Now with YouTube and all these paint companies and everyone putting out amazing content, it's fantastic. It's such a good time to step into the hobby. Yeah, I would say, just call Kenny. <laughs> yeah, and God forbid there's enough airbrush artists out there now that are absolutely phenomenal between Kenny and... Uh, Angelo Grandes, uh, so many people. And even in our, in our own stuff, in Death or Glory, we have so many good hobbyists. I can't even name them all. If I started, I'd be oh, doing there's so many. I mean, hell, we, we have the two top guys. Yeah. So Mike and uh, Mike and Matt. So Mike, Mike and Matt. And then you got Mike Norton. You've got all the guys in the Midwest who, if I, if I could remember half their names, I'd be doing disservice mentioning one of them because <laughs> <laughs> I'm old and I forget names in about 30 seconds. It's, it's crazy. There's so many good painters. And I mean, like I am blessed that I have, as I, as I always say this, I had uh, Kemp and all of that crew from Du Bois who were phenomenal with helping me with my hobby side of things and getting me up to speed and getting things going for that. You, to where it's like you even had scrubs like Courtney. Yeah, <laughs> not, not, nowhere near a scrub. That man taught me how to paint. <laughs> um, you know, and it was it absolutely one of those things that when you enjoy the hobby side of things and you find people with similar interests, it's fantastic. Um, I love hobby chats and seeing people's progressions and, you know, even when someone goes, hey, I just finished this conversion. I know it looks rough right now, but this is what I'm going for. I enjoy seeing all that stuff. I like it's work in progress, like kind of a lot, to be honest with you, because I like to see what you started with. You know what I mean? The end yeah. product, because I don't see colors as well. You know what I mean? The end product sometimes isn't the, the jam for me. I love to see like that's what I'm like loving so much about Matt showing me all this stuff because yeah. he's kind of pulling back the the, the Kate, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm, I'm I've actually been sorting brushes for the last couple of days, but like I'm trying to like sort out. Hey, these are my hobby brushes. These are my terrain brushes. This is stuff I have going on, and this is like probably a tenth of what I own for brushes, which is kind of crazy. Yeah, the the I, best I is may or may not have a problem. Me, me, <laughs> ju me, just starting to paint, and yeah. Sniggs <laughs> literally just follows me around and goes, "Is there any way you could stop smashing the brush?" So that every time you're not using it, you just crush it down. He's like, I literally put out five holders in front of you, hoping that any of them would be used by you. I'm like, well, what were you thinking? Yeah, KR War Paint War Colors is an interesting one. Chimera Colors is actually one of the more intriguing colors right now. I've played with them a little bit and had a little bit of fun. It's good times. Here's what I'm going to talk about because I need to 
segue because I can't talk about the same subject for too long. Dude, have you watched Shogun yet? I have not watched Shogun yet. I've heard good things, but haven't had a chance to watch it. So good, dude. So good. Well, you you want to watch something good? Uh, watch Damsel on Netflix. It's it's a movie. I saw uh, it. Britt was watching it, actually. I saw it. Sorry. I didn't watch the whole. I watched half of it because I went and sat with her uh, while she was watching it <laughs> at the end. But uh, I I checked that out. You you have to watch Shogun, man. It's it's right. it's really good. The main guy, I mean, he's from everything. Such I, mean, I can't even remember his name, but he's such a good actor. Uh, but their the cast is just crushing it, man. Uh, and they set it up for the rest of the season. I'm I'm very excited to check it out. Uh, the book Shogun was a great book too. I have yeah. I had read both. I read the old one too. Uh, so it is. I, I was very excited because I've been watching a lot of shitty stuff lately. You know what I mean? Where I'm just trying to get something new to watch. Obviously, I've been a little under the weather. Uh, also, haven't been able to sleep. So, I've been watching lots and lots of whatever. Right. I, I, I watch what I'm going to call the... I, I, I like documentaries on occasion. I, I, I partake in them. And I watch the one on the program, which if you haven't had a chance to watch, is really messed up. <laughs> It had happened not too far from where I live, so it was a an interesting thing about like one of those teen rehabilitation things. Yeah, it was, it was Ooh, I don't know which one that is. Yeah, it was on Netflix. It's called the program in Ogdensburg, New York. They had this thing that was uh, where they would take quote unquote troubled teens to try and rehabilitate them, and it basically was a way for a company to make a ton of money off troubled teens. Oh, that, uh, seems, that seems cool. It was it was a really interesting watch and I it was very disturbing all at the same time. So Yeah, you know, I don't I don't want that in my life. You know what I want in my life? <laughs> Things like Shogun. Stop trying to bring me down, man. I'm already sick. <laughs> I don't need shitty stuff. I need uplifting, awesome fantasy. I don't need you no know, th- these people are terrible. Yeah, no shit, man. <laughs> Hold on. Let me Google it real quick. People suck. Got it. Click. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> But all right, so we know what you're playing, Brad. You know, you're, you're running all that meta craziness and having some fun. So uh, Adepticon, so I want to talk about my list a little bit. I, I don't get a chance to do this very often. So uh, we're going to go with my unending swarm list, and I want some feedback from you. Talk about uh, what I can do better, what kind of thing I can do. Uh, so unending swarm, because I'm a glutton for punishment and don't want to be able to move at the end of Saturday. <laughs> uh, so we're, we're starting with the Death Leaper. We're doing the uh, the Warlord Hive Tyrant with uh, Monstrous Bone Sword and Lash Whips, the Neuro Tyrant. Uh, no enhancements, because I just don't see the point in an in, in, in ending swarm. We got 20 Gargoyles, 10 Gargoyles, 10 Gargoyles, uh, so 20 Hormigons. You said 20, 10, 10? 20, 10, 10. So, okay. Yep. okay. I like where you're going, guy. I still think that Gargoyles are the individual best unit in the entirety of the codex because the oc2 move 12 plus d6 plus another six uh in a, you know infantry fly i think that is is clearly the best unit as far as utility move block scoring uh it can just win games against certain armies by pinning them in their in their backfield uh also i still think even with the increase in points I think Death Leaper is still an auto include. That guy is bonkers. Precision with two damage is crazy. Yeah. All right, so then we're going to continue on. I got uh, 20 Hormigants, uh, three units of 20 Termigants. Um, I, I just tried them with Flesh Borers and the, uh, the Flamer in each. Uh, one Biovore, two Exocrines, a Lictor, because I love the free rapid ingress, uh, Neurogants. A unit of 20, uh, three neuro lictors, and a pyrovore because I had 35 points left at the end. Why you lied to everybody? You know it's not a unit of 20. It's a unit of 22. It is 22 of them, yes, because there is also the neuro beast. Or the That's no right. Beast. I was That's just right. going to say. <laughs> I, come in. Sorry, I, didn't, I didn't want to get into the Gretchen territory. Uh, yeah, exactly. You don't want to be like Brad and uh, <laughs> accidentally play with less models the entire mo- weekend. Uh, I still get, I, th- that's pretty much the thing that everybody brings up all the time from that. Hey, remember the time you got, uh, you lost 10 guys and the, uh, Ying Karn came all up on you, even though you have 11 guys. Uh Oh, Lyle Dixon with $2 super chat. Lictor, you barely even knew her. <laughs> 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 uh, but 
I think you need the third exocrine for sure. I just uh, it Tiernid lists go triple exocrine, period. That's how you start your list. Uh, yeah, so I was the problem I was having with that is at 135 points because I got down to where I had 95 left at the end. I had to cut something I wasn't comfortable cutting. Understood. It's just it, the for the price point of a 135, that amount of shots with that AP and that damage is just so few and far between in that codex. Now the tiered codex has tons of shenanigans that are great, tons of good units that are great, move blocking, mm -hmm. scoring. What they don't have is raw damage for a good price point and or a good distance. You know what I mean? Like the Malice Scepter is a good model, but like you can just retaliate on him because he's got an 18 inch gun. The Exocrine is one of the very few things in that entire book that can do consistent damage from safety. You know what I mean? From a, a distance. So my, my other choice, and this was the I've been leaning towards this partially because I would like to be able to move on Saturday um is an invasion fleet list which starts with the same uh hqs death leaper hive tyrant except this one in the invasion fleet gets adaptive adaptive biology uh neuro tyrant and well, then two so in, in, for everybody for that that's the five of field of pain five of field of pain yeah um so two units of 20 gargoyles um again i could split that as well uh, Biovor, because it always seems useful. Uh, two Exocrines, a Lictor, because, I, again, I still like that free rapid ingress. Uh, unit of Neurogaunts, all 22 of them. Three Neurolictors, hey, guess what? Still really good, even though the points went up. A Norn Emissary, and my thing that I've been having a lot of success with is six Zoanthropes. Um, my reason for Zoanthropes is they just really handle a unit of five Custodes very well. So that's, that's what I'm torn between playing at the moment. Back and forth, uh, the, the problem with, with the Norn is he's just almost a win more sometimes button on it because, like, the armies that can take care of it just blow through him, and the armies that can't take care of him have real issues. But I think you were gonna, you had an advantage already on that, yeah. So, like, I would definitely split. I'd like to see 20 10 10 if you're gonna run 40 gargoyles, I'd like to see one big and two littles yeah. for sure on that. Uh, I do like, I just want the three exocrines for sure. <laughs> An invasion yeah, fleet, I do I, like. I, invasion fleet and synaptic, I do. I like. I like the hive tyrant significantly better than I like him in an enemy swarm. To be honest with you, uh, just because of this, the the uh, you know zeroing out strats. Yeah, the in in unending swarm, I legitimately sat there going, "Do I want the hive tyrant?" But I always felt like he was necessary. I always felt like he fit. Um, he gave you some stuff that no other things gave you. In particular, the, the Venom Cannon, every once in a while, taking chip damage off big stuff is really important, and it had a tendency to do that. You played around with Old One-Eye? Um, I have. I never have success with him and the Carnifexes. Even trying just Old One-Eye on his own, it just never he never did enough for me to, to justify his point cost. As far as points, he's got a real oddball amount of points. He's a buck 40. Yep. So it's just he it feels good. Plus the double regen is legit. It's like people have to basically take care of him right now if they're gonna do it. Oh god, Corey. I play around with old one eye daily. <laughs> <laughs> so remember if you're shaking it more than twice, you are playing with it. <laughs> no. Jeez, but no, I'm I'm really leaning towards the unending swarm. I would like to get that third exocrine in there, but I think it's a must to be honest with you. Yeah, I, I'm not I'm not positive on that one because I, the the choices with the exocrine is do I keep the hormigons in <laughs> uh and, and put in that because everything else seems a little more key. Uh the the hive tyrant I still enjoy. I, I've I've found that he has been very, very useful. Uh, mm, because getting, the, the getting hive, free swarming masses is really handy it's just so expensive yeah oh I, I i don't disagree with you i think 235 it's way over cost it should probably be like in the 175 range but yeah it's just i don't know it's just it's hard for me to justify that in the fact that you can bring so much more shit i guess that's what but my, my head goes to when i do tier ends it just feels like i want them to be 
super swarmy MSU, even with the big units. You know what I mean? Just having yeah. tons of shit. My, my thing is, what other synapse you run in its place, right? Because you need one more synapse thing in that army. True. It's just... I, I, I still think, besides Death Leaper, that the HQs are probably all overpriced, to be honest with you. Oh, yeah. Even the Neuro Tyrant is overpriced at 105. He does nothing for what he is. So the one thing he does is you put him with the Neuro Gaunts, and you can move, advance, move, block, still do actions because he has an Assault Flamer. Do you, that's, put, that's... Do you put the Juiced Flamer on him? I mean, he's fine enough, I guess. I don't know. I just... My, my issue is that... When you look at other characters, like, man, a Hive Tyrant costs basically the same as freaking Nightbringer. You know what yeah. I mean? And Nightbringer yeah. would literally stuff that guy in a box and just send mail that's, him away. That's probably the biggest weakness of the Tyranid book is their their HQ selections or character selections are just in. Eh. With the exception of Death Leaper, who I think is absolutely phenomenal, the Neuro Tyrant's pretty good. He's a little overcosted. But, like, the Broodlords are great if you're playing the Invasion Fleet, or the, yeah, the, uh, Vanguard? the Vanguard Fleet. But outside of that, the, the Old One Eye is okay. The Parasite's kind of overcosted for what he does. The Turvagon is way overcosted. Wildly overcosted. The, the Swarm Lord's at least 100 points too much. What is the deal with him, man? He's like iconic too. I don't understand why they keep smashing his points. I mean, hit, number one, his points are not great. His and his abilities are just kind of bland. He has a vect. Yeah, but he used to have like ultra flavor. Remember, double move from the swarm lord. Yeah, he used to be awesome. Yeah, <coughs> his he does have a ranged weapon now that he didn't have before. I guess that's the sure, but it thing sucks. he got. But it's yeah. <laughs> Strength 5, AP minus 1, 2 damage, Torrent, uh, it's okay. He's literally got a heavy and, flamer, basically. And their, their cheap HQ, which is the winged Tyranid Prime, does nothing. I don't know. What's the cheapest synapse you can put on the board? The the winged Tyranid Prime. Winged Tyranid Prime? 65 points. I mean, could you just spam that and say, screw it, and just bring more bros? And just... I mean, in, in theory, I could bring two of those and bring another unit up and then put the Exocrine in. I think it's pretty much what it boils down to. So that's 130. Yeah, with, with taking out the Pyrovore, I could throw in the other Exocrine and put two of those in. Just feels like the triple Exocrine is going to get you value every game. Yeah. I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> you're 100% not wrong on that. The Exocrines are really good. Three of them on the WTC terrain is a little harder to hide. Like two, I find pretty easy to hide. That third one becomes very difficult, at least in the missions they picked, because I was looking at the boards and his base is pretty big with everything else. It becomes difficult to to make one a little harder to hit. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, it's just, man, I don't know. It's just, I remember when the Hive Tyrants used to be so broken and now they're just like yep. well it's like it, you know, <laughs> the winged hive tyrant at one point was terrifying and now it's like all right he's he's okay if you got him in the the vanguard he's 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 okay but like he still dies really easily I and mean, you fail two saves and he kind of just goes away against big guns i just he's just there i I don't know. They they also made Tyrant Guards so shitty. So oh, yeah, don't even get me talking about those. That's, that's they're just they're not worth anything on that. So like um in the forty five minute then I am gonna say so KR does yell at me. Please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps out and really juices up the metrics so we can get seen by more. A uh, new episode of Invincible came out today. Jesus, I haven't put in a news episode in forever and ever. Oh, wow. oh that, I, that one. Guess I know what I'm watching tonight. Yeah, I was just want to say <laughs> it's been like what, a long time. To tell you the truth. Yeah, um, uh, they did some good stuff with the. Uh, what the heck was it? There was a little mini series they did or mini movie for one of the characters from that that was good. Uh, Adam, uh, Adam Eve. Yep. Yep. So <clears throat> they did that too. Also. I know people are talking about the wanting to talk about Tau stuff, but you know what I want to talk about? Where the hell are my orcs? 
This is bullshit. I mean, you gotta remember, you got custodes before orcs. This is fucking no. No, I do not. No, bad, Brian. No, bad. No. So you get you get to get the golden boys before you get orcs. This is trash. You gotta remember, they were a spring release. I mean, I've got to assume all of this shit spring release, and they were number one on the map. No, they, they were. were. They're totally number one. At least they were number one in my mind. Who are you going to remember? Who are you going to take the word of? A guy with neurological problems or somebody else? Oh, wait. Or the other guy with neurological problems. <laughs> <laughs> or is there in the big box somewhere in the bottom of the Red Sea? Oh, we had a super cool orc model. Exactly. Or October 24, 2024, Brad. Go blue. God damn it. <laughs> Uh, I mean, did it say this week? You know what? I'm on Warhammer Community right now. Where Where's the article, damn it? I'm going through this right now. When does it say that I get my orcs? I demand yeah. satisfaction. Uh, hey, what we got? We got Meta Watch this week. and uh, That's Meta Watch for Sigmar. Yeah, which means maybe maybe next week we'll get one for 40k. Son of a bitch. Also nice riptides. I I got the, a picture of these riptides from some scrub. Some bum. Brandon do more? Yeah. These are these these are his riptides he got ready for um Cherokee actually. Those are really nice. I, I, I gotta give Brandon credit. He he can whip out uh, some really fantastic stuff. The display board that he's been posting that he's getting ready for Adepticon looks really cool. He's got some mojo stuff and stuff, Frosty, bro. You know, so he, I, I like these ones because of the fact that we were doing a stream on Wednesday and he had literally just opened the, uh, <coughs> the, the box, you know, like she got them completely ready, done, uh, and in fighting shape for the tournament, like instantaneously. It's crazy. Oh, Jesus. And Corey's <laughs> going to get shot. You know what, Corey? I was going to call you back, but now you've offended me. Corey, Corey I'm, I'm not going <laughs> to lie. If I was going to Adepticon and you were going to be there, I'd buy you a beer for that one. <laughs> In space dryads and gardening book. It's, this is <laughs> bullshit. It's fungus <laughs> among us. You guys are bad people. <laughs> That's fantastic. But, uh, so yeah. what else are you looking forward to other than the orc book? What else, what, what, what's got your interest peaked in 40K? Is there something you want to try out that you haven't Dark done Eldar. yet? I took Dark Eldar to Arkansas, and I've got some real... Uh, hold on one second. I've got some really big ideas for what I can do with that army. Um, I think that might be something on my plan teams. So I'm going to play orcs or... Orcs and Dark Eldar right now is what's got my mojo going. Uh-oh, Lyle Dixon with $2 Super Chat. Eventually, Brad will stop giving me new armies to play, and Heidi can show off how great she can paint, too. Screw you, Brad. I understand that. <laughs> but um, uh, I, I really I enjoy the orcs, but I'm it's like I'm still so psyched up about orcs, but I, I thought I was going to be getting new orcs. You know what I mean? So I'm I'm in that whole give me new new mojo stuff. So the. Uh, and oh, then Connor, the, I like that suggestion. <laughs> Every faction, oh my god, that would be amazing. Kind of any predictions for your reveals at Adepticon? My hope is a new detachment for every faction. I would love to see them do that for everything that doesn't currently have a codex. You know, there's a lot of games that do a lot of that stuff. They they do a lot of, you know, like just giving everybody a little bit. We used to get a lot more. We used to get a lot more stuff in White Dwarfs, if you recall. Yeah. I mean, they do that for a lot of the other game systems. A lot of their, what they call their boxed games. So Kill Team, Warcry, Blood Bowl, and stuff like that. They put teams in White Door for little scenarios or kind of interesting stuff. I'd love for them to do that. That'd be fantastic. I just feel like we used to get touched just to like a sprinkling of stuff. You know what I mean? New shit came out all the time. Yeah. And a new a new detachment would come out. I mean, you got to think, this is where I'm going to go back. Back in the day when you had the Vehicle Builder and Monster, uh, Monster Builder rules, those all came out in White Dwarf. Oh, okay. Jesus, Mark the Hammer Coleman is being treated at Toledo Hospital after saving his dad from a burning house in Fremont. 
<laughs> I hope he's doing well, but also well done, sir. That's a brave act. Uh, dude's yeah, also I righteous. Think, I, it wouldn't. It wouldn't shock me that if an Adepticon, the big big reveal because they put out the the Sigmar lied uh, video um, early this week, late last week, uh, that they unveil a new box set for age of sigmar that would be like a next edition type thing would be my guess because i just want to see a campaign man no seriously like like we've got we left a lot of the storyline up you know what i mean abaddon literally blew up kania busted the rift you know what i mean the ayatar went to the rift (laughs) of chaos basically you know cutting the galaxy in half we have the return of the lion um, I'd love to be playing a box set that has campaign rules in it. You know what I mean? Uh, why? I'd love that. Do you want to see campaign rules or do you want to see things like we got where there's, hey, here's an attachment in a campaign book? But can I do both? It'd be awesome if they could. I mean, I just, it, I, I would really like to see the detachments because we've had multiple detachments that have come out during campaigns and stuff before. Oh, yeah. So I would really love to see that. I'd love to be seeing a excuse me, a Dark Angels detachment, you know, that has something to do with anti-chaos, you know, Tau, you know, anybody that had, doesn't have a book, to be honest with you, you could get a lot of different detachments for specifically the fights, you know, in and around the Rift. You know what I mean? There's a lot of fights going on right now in the 40K universe. <coughs> so. Yeah. Oh, a new campaign season would be nice for 40K. Uh, Leviathan is, what, eight, nine months in at this point, something like that. Be nice to see a new, a you know, new uh, season. I'll give it on that. Everybody's like campaigns end up as rulable. Lyle's like stop. But I don't know. I, I how about this? We don't. Then we don't need an attachment. How about we just do ca- the campaign as part of uh, the the new season? I mean, the, the the campaign could literally be the new season of rules. We've been in Leviathan for what all of tenth. You know yep. what I mean? New secondaries, new missions. You know what I mean? We we're supposed to get those every six months. We haven't had anything. They didn't say every six months for this edition. Yeah, the, the old, sorry, the old editions, okay. that's what we did. Though, you know what I mean? So I'm just saying that, like, that could be part of the campaign. Uh, play the storyline if you want to play it, but that's what, you know, comes out in the tournaments. Yep. <clears throat> 100%, guys. Lyle comes and he's 100% right, because he goes, at one point in time, I needed four books and three white drawers to run my army. Uh, Tiernan's had that for a while. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, holy shit, yeah, you needed 15 books to run stuff. And I, and I get that, but I'd also like some new flavor. Yeah, you know I mean, I just, it, you want your new toys and your new rules. Yeah, and I stuff. mean, if, if they put stuff out in White Dwarf, I would love them to also put it out for free on Warhammer Community. Don't get me wrong. Uh, it would be it'd be fantastic if White Dwarf was available and stocked enough at every place where the minute they put out a new rule and everybody could go buy one, but we know it's not, it doesn't happen that way. Because if there's not a reason to buy White Dwarf, most people flip through it and kind of pass over it. Um, <clears throat> but at the same time, I, I would love to see new stuff come out a little bit faster than it's been coming, for rules at least wise. Yeah, I'm surprised on that. We were, I mean, we're getting a real backlog. Uh, obviously, there's logistic shit going on in the world right now. But uh, electronic exists, you know what I mean? So, like, I would like to have some silver. Uh you know what? I didn't even see that one on that. Uh, probably that would have a nice super chat. He goes, I'll send you a video of you reacting to Go Blue. <laughs> so I was trying to figure out how to put that one uh, where I wanted to put it up also. Uh, I do pay the six bucks a month uh, the for the app and stuff. So, yeah, I pay the 60 bucks a year for it. Yeah, it's, same thing. I paid the, the one time. It gives you the yeah, Warhammer Plus stuff. And let alone, you get a $50 model out of the deal every year anyway. So it's kind of not a big deal. So I I just wish that they would... It, in, the, bleh, in the app, I wish... I do not want to have that stupid book code thing. That just drives me crazy. Like, I will just pay more for the app, to be honest with you, just yeah. to have access to everything. It drives me bonkers town nuts to have to put in, like, that goofy code uh, for shit. Because I just want to be able to, to see what I can see, you know what I mean, when I'm playing. So do I need rules? Cool, it's there, bam. I don't want to, oh, I didn't put in my code for the agents of the Imperium or some shit, you know what I mean? <coughs> uh, but you have to put in the, you have to get the books for it. 
that's well, that's my thing. I, I would love to have just the app. Period. Just I'll, I will pay more for the app uh, if you just have me. Let me I mean, have, in, continue to have it. In Sigma, they do offer EPUBs of a lot of the books. <laughs> I haven't. I haven't not been buying the books for uh, Sigma because I kind of assume there's a new edition coming. But you know, I know that in the Azir app, which was the old version of the app, uh, you could just buy your book in there as well, which was nice. Yeah, it's just I want to be able to the reference things you know what i mean yep. when i'm playing someone uh, i don't want to have to buy the books that i don't like to be honest with you i mean that's why i think they should do like hey just buy the rules in the app yes i would i would love to go just click click buy the rules yep. because there's certain armies that i'm excited about and certain armies i'm not i enjoy having the books i like having the physical books because i'm an old man and i like to read the fluff like you know what i mean so i i just enjoy reading the stories it's one of the main things i do on that because to tell you the truth, I'm on my computer, on my phone, looking at rules. I'm sitting down, chilling out, reading the stories if I want to read the codex. Yep. Exactly, KR. I'm not buying the damn book. I have bookshelves full of old rules that someone will have to haul out when I'm dead. I have so many old books. Uh, but I do love the stories in them. I love them a lot. I wish they would do... Compl do, they do have they done any compilation stories of codex uh fluff and stuff like that because i don't know why they have if they haven't i don't know why they haven't because i would get that book I, I i honestly don't think they've ever done that you know what i do remember this Corey. this is a big deal remember the white dwarf path to glory rules where you leveled up a fantasy character uh, chaos warband in a league that was awesome yeah they've had multiple styles of that uh i'm an rpg player first so i just i love that kind of shit so I would really enjoy that for sure. For sure. Uh, that sounds boss mode. So I guess this is the time of the show where we, we promote things and talk about stuff. Warhead 40 K lure dot anything. I'm everywhere. Uh, it's doing well. We're about to, I'm about to uh, record Aramon as my ne very next one. Uh, we just did uh, hive worlds. Holy God, by the way, uh, living in the 40k universe sucks balls. It sucks real balls when you live in a hive world. <laughs> Absolutely. And for me, I want to promote the Salt City GT coming up this August 9th, 10th, and 11th in Syracuse, New York. 40k, Age of Sigmar, Old World, Kill Team, and Marvel Crisis Protocol. Sign up today because, of course, the more tickets we sell for like certain systems we might take away from others so if you want to play sign up for what you want to sign up for today love it also go to the 40k lurecast discord it is a fun time <laughs> i do love it there's i love the debates that get going on over lore that's <coughs> how i got into the game i love everything about this uh can i help you do the corbulu episode <laughs> no you guys still have to play that game by the way yeah you do that lore cast is actually Tinder for furries. No, that's my other cast. It just is tinderforfurries.com. So on that note, let's Queensweave our way out of here. <laughs>